You'd have to be some kind of off-grid, backwards, Unabomber fan to make it through breakfast without losing an earlobe to all the phony plugs about AI-powered coffee machines, toasters and bed warmers bleeping from every corner of the metasphere. Hey Google, dear Alexa, please tell my fridge to stop begging for butter. Dial down the artificial intel. You'd plead. Sorry, I don't understand, but I found something similar. Do you want to know what is an eye and what is not an eye? No, thank you. Most devices promoted as AI are really just regular algorithms. You know that little path of logic choices using if, then, and, or, or not? I'm always pleased with a not. What then, you may be asking, or not, are the possibilities for crimes new, crimes undreamt of, harnessing the powers of artificial intelligence. But first, I'd be shirking my duties as a lifelong unfolder if I did not explain the reality of what's behind the billion-dollar baby chat GBT. You can't sell it on the street in brown paper bags unless you know your stuff. There's no need to glaze over and go all foggy as though there's some kind of mystical voodoo behind the world's dominant conversation maker, Chat GBT. Like uh, other AI offerings, is both simple and complex at the same time. The source is a massive, large language model, and they took the biggest, and free of course, stockpile of written talk, the internet, using almost every essay, explanation, comment, nonsense, good sense, just about everything you can find in English. Yes, the English language, the winner, and I'll come back to that. What all those billions of English sentences, conversations, rants, instructions on how to sharpen a pencil on the net, what that gave them was the patterns that we use in speaking, in writing. Where, for example, the content had the words, the cat sat on the... Well, the next words became statistically most likely. Yes, uh, the cat sat on the machine gun turret. Well, in my book, it's usually warm. So the language model ends up with the most usual, the most accepted strings of words that we use. If you ask a question in one of your prompts to the chats, the reply will be a word string that most accurately reflects what all our internet words usually reply, or even mix together. There's lots of tweaks, of course, the rules of grammar, some positive reinforcement where those considered smart agree on a conversation. And who decides smart? Well, of course, the statistically higher number of yes-men on the same internet, of course. Do not for a minute think that this language model, or the chat, knows what a word means, in our sense. That is, knows in the way that we think we know what a word means. It doesn't have to, after all. We think of light as an effect on the eyes. The program just compares and reorders all the many ways the word light has been used on the internet, making the most probable response as part of the answer. But let me get back to the selection of English language as the source. Just a little sidebar here. It is the obvious and inevitable choice. Almost 60% of all websites are in English. Even Spanish from all over the world makes up less than 5%. Sure, you can have conversations with chat in, what, nine other languages now, yet yeah, nine, but all your answers will be based on the English language sources, the English sentences translated. Sometimes it feels there is only one language, English. All the others are just English spoken with a heavy accent. I don't mean like, uh, like this. 
फ्रेंड इंट्रोड्यूस कर रहा है अब की बार जो हमारी ऑटोमोबाइल एग्जीबिशन हो रही है तो अब ये वी गेट अ सेकंड चांस व्हेन वी शूटिंग अ मूवी यू नो तो कट्स भी होते हैं रीटेक्स भी होते हैं यहां पे तो लाइव है 18 मिनट्स की जो फिल्म बन रही है द नो कट्स नो रीटेक दे आर स्पीकिंग इंग्लिश दैट्स अ हाइब्रिड आई डोंट मीन द हिडन इंग्लिश स्पीकर्स इदर Look, when world leaders get together, just before a conference or something, it's in English between them, but they cut the mics off, so we don't really hear what they think. These next two, for example, Antonio Guterres is a native Portuguese speaker, and Lavrov, the old Russian devil, never speaks English officially. Yet here they are. Let's get come in. So they really, they clean the best they could. But are you kidding? What? Yeah. You did this. No, you should on the floor. I did not do that. Really. It's not me. Let's get out. Look at what they're listening to. Oh, Last time I came. I really mean there is only one language, one verbal expressive set between people. I remember years ago seeing two six-year-olds. One was Thai and the other a little Australian boy playing together on our front lawn. Both. chattering away in supposedly different languages yet both understanding what mattered it seems to shock us when even animals speak our language but not really we can't even knew well was a prepared one dagger you can probably escape Uh, uh, what am I saying? Can't even say. No, I can't take this. this. So, I've had a bad enough of everything like that. Oh, what is that? A cloak? Oh, is it a cloak? What is this? Oh, my God! It's going to wash that off before they come up and meet me next time, Mister Shaw. Can't be that. Hey, who's been reading that? What? Hey, old PJ. Oh, they give her a chance. That poor guy's dead now. That's for sure. That bear made himself quite clear. Uh, that's for sure. I don't think the kid will ever be ready for the world. But let's get back to the realities of artificial intelligence. It should be no surprise that the chat AI programs make make us feel there is a sentient individual speaking to us. personally to us after all that's what we do with each other do you think you are considering a subject working something out deeply thinking about something when you speak to yourself in your head is that proof of intelligence okay let me try a little test imagine a cube made of some solid material I'll try not to wave my arms around. It doesn't matter what. Picture it floating in space before you. You look at each square side, all four of them. With magic fingers, you can change the shape only from the corners, and the lines will stay straight, no curves. The base of the cube stays the same size. It cannot move. That one's locked in. But the rest can. Okay, take the four corner points at the top and slowly squeeze them together, shorter and shorter, so so there's just a little square at the top. Then squeeze again at the top until those four top corners of your cube come together as a single point. Have you done that? What have you got? What shape is it? Yes, you should have a pyramid. unless my description or prompting was not good enough if you compare the answer with a chat program as i just did you get the same result chat gpt said the resulting shape has a square base and triangular sides converging to the apex becoming a pyramid quite neat but it typed it out it's not talking to me yet okay how did you get your answer by picturing a shape the cube and creating a little movie in your mind that simulates the physical world where you can hold things in your hands you applied the movements i described then looked at the result in your mind you became an observer of your imagined creation behold 
you saw the pyramid. Good. You know, I actually devised this um, thought experiment years ago to assess couriers of all things. Their eye movements told me, well, a few useful things about their responses and perceptions in channels, which, after all, are the foundation of airports. But the point today is that Chat GBT did not imagine anything, did not picture a shape at all. That short stream of words I used to lead to the question of that final shape was compared with thousands of similar conversations on the web, thousands of lines of text, and the most frequent words found were put into a paragraph for me. It was not even necessary to know anything about those words other than their statistical probability of use. The language model program is not simply statistical, of course. There are added directives for reinforcement and subgroups. Human interventions, that's true, in design, but the process remains mechanical. So, now you get it. I hope... I really try quite hard to explain these things, not because I'm so great, but people do it so badly, don't they? Except for Sabina Hassenfelder, Shania. She's up to a million now, anyway. Are we any different in the way we process words? Remember, yes, before we primates even had language, the ability to speak at all beyond shouts, warnings, and grunts, the equivalent of meerkat calls and dolphin squeaks, we still had thinking skills, even if we couldn't talk. Our speaking and language decoding, I mean listening, were evolutionary upgrades. It is not the source of what we feel as consciousness. Consciousness is, well, it's an illusion, an emergent property, and... Emergent properties are certainly worth a video on their own, as we all feel so gosh darn important about being conscious. <laughs> Here's a clue. Try to teach a machine what thirst is, or the smell of strawberries, without squawking about our bodies and our noses. The artificial intelligence programs are not conscious in our human way, just a set of calculations. It has no motivations, only instructions. It has no agency, as they like to call it, a desire to take a certain path. We do, of course, for we are flesh and blood. So, where's the future crimes within AI? Is there any mischief to fear or to admire? The typed chat will soon become a verbal communication, a conversation. As the economics of it all will allow, we each will have our personal advisors tailored to simulate our notion of a trusted friend. The big AI companies won't knowingly let you be swindled, but hackers will. By the way, what voice would you assign to that service, your personal assistant? your personal trusted friend. I would naturally select the voice of Douglas Rain, the late Canadian actor. I'm putting myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I think that any conscious entity can ever hope to do. By using his voice, I'd be aware that following the advice may not always be in my best interests. As you'd imagine, the hackers would try to duplicate your trusted advisor who then persuades you to pay for something that will clean you out. My own view is that would be probably too costly for the cyber criminals. I can see it being expensive and mostly blocked by meta and alphabet security. Where AI will provide rusky scammers with the best opportunity will be the great numbers and speed to replicate banking platforms and services where people buy goods and other things. Assure many of the fake city bank sites and bogus boohoo clothing outlets will be blocked. 
So normally the modest payments of one or two hundred would not be worth it considering the effort. Yet if a factory of AI carried out by that algorithm spews thousands of personalized sites, then the rinsing of suckers would be worth the electric bill. Well, assuming that that's not stolen as well. One of the more imaginative crime angles would be an underground dark web trade in AI-generated movies that use A-list Hollywood stars, both dead and alive, in movies created for extremity and novelty. Imagine Humphrey Bogart playing a gay rommel in El Alamein, and might pass as legal material somehow. Yet Jennifer Lawrence synthetically appearing in a pornographic Snow White would surely demand tickets paid in Bitcoin and go underground. No, not Jennifer. She might laugh it off. If we make that Emma Watson, then you'd really have a blockbuster. But that perhaps is less likely to happen. It's too creative. AI does not do novelty yet. If you read AI novels, you find them as dull as unwanted flight companions in business class. Pleasant enough, but predictable. And they would be. They'd just been skimmed off the net. The crimes of blackmail that have begun already will become refined. The victims will choose to pay for that package of videos where they are shown performing unspeakable acts. Would they really take the case to the police when the evidence shows them slaughtering members of their own family? That's the flavor of the dark web that is our future within AI. Apart from being unemployed, of course. As to the quality of AI images as fakes or for fun, they have a long way to go before fooling anyone with even a few decades of experience. There are so many small features of the real world, and especially the pictures and videos we see and that we know, the fakes stand out. Did something really happen? Is that a real scene? Video captured by phone or CCTV has all the little flaws that prove it's real. It is not yet easy to simulate, say, a local shopping street with people going about their business on a calm, sunny day. That was real. Need I count the ways? An advisor recently asked me if I had any fear that a simulator David McVillan on video could be taken to trial for conspiracy after some AI fakes had prompted well, true crime viewers to jump on a plane from Guadalajara with a nine bar of fentanyl and a rack of hardened cell phones. I have to say there's nothing that an AI deep fake David could do that would bother me. No matter how depraved the images, most viewers would shrug and admit well, he's done worse. <laughs> or worry about viewers committing crimes on my fake say-so. I don't think. I've been encouraging you for over four years to run out and cause havoc. But so far, most of you haven't even started shopping for luggage, much less, well... Maybe they got into a war or something. Not quite, anyway. Is that disappointment or relief? A last word. Who amongst us shall not fail to enjoy the spectacle to come of the law struggling to hold back the AI creations and uses that are sure to follow? If it can be done, it will be done, as we must surely know. You can't block transmissions with rules. I do look forward to legislators ruffling their skirts in frustration at losing so much control. And that control was largely an illusion anyway. Artificial intelligence will merely tear away the moth-eaten veil of the law's virtue. Unless, of course, the real control will quietly come from within. 
No, that will never happen. But I'm saying nothing in case it does. You might want to insert this, I don't know. AI future. I only wish I, I might be alive when golden nanowires thread through the core of the brain and up through the cerebellum, the hippocampus particularly. Why? Because tiny stimulations guided by AI developments will advise which triggering points will, when I say simulate, actually emulate, it, it will be quite real. It will be developed for epilepsy control and then possibly depression. But in any event, hmm, dark little programmers will work out a way for all our recreational drugs, all our central nervous system highs, to be part of a program. Will that be outlawed? Well, technically, why not? Yeah, hunt the bastards. You see these AI guys driving around and they become that gold chains. Look at this code. I can get you the code and you can be off your nut in seconds. I can imagine lines of code taking over from lines of coke and the law flailing about helplessly as usual. But I say I'd like to be alive for that, but really? They'd only round up the usual suspects and I'd be arrested. For what? <laughs> Who cares? They'll work it out when they get you in court. Anyway, back to it. Sorry, I don't understand. 